Hi, this is Keith Williams and welcome to Five Up World. <laughs> it's not Keith Williams, it's Mick. Hello, welcome to the vlog. This particular episode is inspired by Keith from Five Watt World, however. This came about because some people in the comments section had started to say I'm starting to look <laughs> like Keith. Now, uh, I'm embarrassed to say I wasn't overly familiar with Keith's channel, so I checked it out. And literally, as I'm sat there watching some of Keith's videos, an email pops in from BV Ninja, who uh, moderates the TPS VCQ that we run on a Monday, saying that Keith had been in touch and he wanted a clip from that pedal show to use in one of his episodes, of course. So um, sorted him out the high-res clip, sent him an email, and I'm talking to Keith. Uh, so now we're introduced and I'm watching his videos and I am intrigued and inspired by Keith's philosophy. The most music from the least gear. Think about that just for a second. The most music from the least gear. And I think deep down as human beings, that's probably what we all want, isn't it? Um, you might say that it's singing. Doesn't get any less gear than no gear at all. And the most musical thing that you probably have is your voice. Well, <laughs> the mu most musical thing that some people have is their voice. But then we need music to go with it. We start creating that music and then this happens. How many overdrive pedals do you have, Dan? Um, at least 50, maybe 100. How many overdrives do you have, Mick? Um, I don't actually know, maybe 50. So I'm asking myself, how much is enough? What's the most pared down rig I could be properly happy with? And again, I'll quote Keith here, because some of these statements are really powerful. We need to be letting go of the FOMO, the fear of missing out. You need more time on yourself, not on your gear. We can find creativity from limitations. Having is not the problem. Wanting is the problem. And maybe most powerful of all, not doing because we don't have. I think we can all relate to those statements. Keith, thanks for making them. It's really energizing stuff. Okay, let's define the parameters. So first off, my more music from less gear rig needs to be able to cover the kind of gigs I'd be doing outside of COVID. Um, that would be TPS band, for example, we do what bit of Pink Floyd, bit of Soundgarden, um, Hendrixy kind of sounds, Doyle Bramall sounds, all the stuff that I like to do, Brothers Landreth, you know, the canon of rock and roll guitar history uh, to a point. Clearly, it's not going to do absolutely every sound, but I need to cover as much of that as makes me happy. And secondly, I'd like to be able to record that as well. Now, clearly, if you're in a recording studio environment, chances are you're gonna be swapping things in and out as you need them. But having that basic board there uh, just gives you all those options. But for sure, we don't have to go crazy and have everything. I'd be really happy sat there riffing away on this Supro, tuned down to D, and a Marshall Class 5. If I say so myself, what a cool sound. But hang on a sec, let's say I need a louder clean sound. If the drummer is even half alive, that's just not gonna happen from the little class five. It starts breaking up way too early. And then what about rolling the volume back a little bit, getting that lovely clean sound when the fuzz, oh, I haven't got a fuzz. Okay, this isn't gonna work. However cool that sound is, it's not gonna do the things that I described before. So let's try something else. At the very least, I want some reverb. You might not like reverb. I can't live without it. No reverb, no happy. And let us not talk falsely here, no strat, no happy. So being slightly more realistic and fuzz notwithstanding, I think this is the most basic rig I'd be happy to get away with. Guitar, cable, amp. And to be fair, lots of people are even doing away with the amp part of this, but with my utmost respect to those people, over my dead body. So now I've got some headroom for my cleans, and because it's a two-channel amp, I've got some overdrive as well, and hallelujah, I can be heard over the drummer with reverb. <laughs>
Uh, what about a Blues Junior instead of a Hot Rod Deluxe, I hear you ask? Yeah, maybe. Tried it in a few bands, but again, just not loud enough for me in terms of the clean headroom, not enough dynamic. And um, what about a 65 Deluxe Reverb? Yep, yeah, really great amp, love them, have used them in the past. We own one here, but the overdrive is then a bit of an issue because in order to get that lovely overdrive out of a 65 Deluxe Reverb, you've got to crank it. That is too loud for most stages these days. Plus, I kind of want the slightly more rockier distortion of the Hot Rod Deluxe. It is much derided, but I actually think it can sound pretty cool. Now then, guitars. I know I can do pretty much everything on the Strat, especially when the bridge pickup is connected to the tone pot. But you know what? Some of those songs in the set, and certainly in recording environments, having a classic PAF tone is really important to me. What do we do? It's quite often a cream tune or crop up in the set. Anything from the sort of canon of 70s rock that might be free or, or what have you. Um, and yes, I know Clapton did the cream reunion gigs with a Strat, but it's just not right. It's got to be, it's got to be a humbucker. And for me, you know, two guitars is kind of a minimum. I think maybe 30% for the tone. 30% because it puts my head in a different place for playing. And 40% because it looks cool. What's the point of playing the electric guitar if you don't even want to look cool? Hello, old friend. <laughs> Okay, Strat 335, Hot Rod Deluxe. I can do a lot of stuff at this point. Now, I think I want some extra gain options. Just one overdrive pedal? Eee. The truth is there's probably three key gain colors that I would like to have. <laughs> First is the Tube Screamer, you know, as an SRV devotee, um, that mid-range push is something that I'm very, very familiar with and very happy with. And then there's the Klon, right? It's just a more better pedal, as Josh from JHS says, but I think Matt Schofield might have coined that term first. Anyway, more better. Um, it works with literally any guitar and every amp. Uh, I use it as a solo boost after Fuzz and after Tube Screamer. And I also use it as a really nice clean boost. Works so great with strats for that. Seen as I mentioned fuzz, of course fuzz. I love fuzz. Can I live without it? Yes. Do I want to live without it? No. that extra special brand of human who says, yeah, man, but you know, real guitar players just played with the amp and the guitar. Um, yeah, some of them did. Some sounded great. 
What about Hendrix and his fuzz face and his univibe? What about SRV and his tube screamer? Gilmore and 8 million pedals? You know, come on, let's all say it together. Pedals aren't cheating, people. Moving on, I need space, man. Um, I really do need space. Delay is central to so many classic rock and roll guitar sounds. Classic rock and roll being one. <laughs> That kind of Robin Ford, Larry Carlton y sound that I love so much really needs a delay. Gilmore just isn't the same without delay. What about The Edge? Based his whole career on it. It's just too much over all the music I love. Delay, you're in. Okay, you can see what's happening here. What about the wobble? I need wobble. If we do little wing, I need wobble. Once we get to the third time around, blues in G, I could really use some wobble. yet? Well, seeing as I mentioned that third chorus around blues in G, what about an octave? Um, I'm a massive Hendrix fan, I'm a massive Doyle Bramble fan, and I really love the sound of octave up. So um, yeah, let's add that. <laughs> Okay, I think we're probably there, but seeing as we mentioned Little Wing, there is a pedal that I've come across just recently that I really don't want to be without. Yeah, nice little room reverb and something really spacey should we have the opportunity to do a bit of a guitar wig out, uh, you know, as an intro to a song. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, honestly, it's one of the most inspiring sounds I've ever played. That means more music. Reverb, you're in. Okay, that really is it. It would really sound awesome, wet, dry. And now I've got all these options, it would be really useful to be able to turn three things off, five things on at once. <laughs> Oh man, where am I now on Keith's most music from least gear ometer? Well, first off, let's make this really clear. I'm not saying that anybody needs this stuff. If this stuff is your end game, your destination, oh, here's an analogy coming. If this is your destination, you're gonna miss out on the journey. And as anyone with a few miles on the clock knows, um, yep, a few miles on the clock, it's the journey that's way more interesting than the destination. And there will be those of you watching who probably feel offended by rigs like this, not least for the crazy cost of it, but also just the sort of acquisitive unpleasantness of it. But let me tell you a story. I started playing guitar when I was eight years old. I was lucky enough, my mum and dad got me a K SG shaped guitar and a plastic bodied five watt amp with an oval speaker. By the time I was 13, uh, I had a satellite branded Strat type guitar. And then when I was 14, by the time I was 14, I was playing out in, in bars by this point, even though that was probably illegal, but anyway, I was doing little pub gigs with our band. And when I was 14, I got, my mum and dad got me a Japanese Fender Strat, 70s reissue. And by that time, I had a Yamaha 50 watt solid state amp with pull distortion. Now with the money I earned from gigs, 15, 16, 17, I did upgrade my amps pretty quickly. Ended up with some nice amps, Fender Twins, Mesa Boogies and stuff. But that guitar, despite a brief dalliance with an RG550 Ibanez, um, I played that guitar pretty much solidly until I was 25. I reckon I'd done 500 gigs before I even owned a delay pedal. And I definitely didn't have anything approaching like a proper grown-ups pedal board till I was about 40, till I met Dan. Which is to say, nobody's looking at a pedal board like this and saying, this is what you should aspire to, go and get it tomorrow. Where you are now isn't where you'll always be. And in saying that, this collection of stuff, however ridiculous it might seem to some people, is a reflection of the journey I've had as a player. And it's the kind of sounds and the kind of stuff that genuinely inspires me to make more music. Now, of course, TPS may be seen as a gear acquisitive kind of pursuit, but the only reason me and Dan do it in the first place is because we're nuts about guitar sounds. I mean, this is 32 years of playing, learning, refining, obsessing. But today in this moment, I think it represents a, oh, I don't want to say pared down, but it represents what I love most about guitar tones. And I've used all these guitar tones in recordings and I've used them all at a gig and I plan to keep doing so and evolving and learning. 
And to continue the journey analogy, I think we can all relate to that, you know, ending up in places we don't want to be, taking wrong turns. The sheer frustration of option paralysis and stuff not working properly is an absolute dead end to creativity. And in those moments, keeping things simple is always the best option. On the other hand, keeping it too simple might lead to a place of stagnation and low motivation. In that situation, a broader palette of sounds might be what inspires you to take your playing to that next level. Now, there are those among you who will think the Supro and the Marshall at the top of this video was the best sound in the whole video by a country mile, and I am not here to argue with you. The best guitar sound to you is the best guitar sound. That's what I think is so utterly fantastic about guitar sounds. You know, there's no 0 to 60, there's no top speed, there's no uh, improved traction control and braking. You can't measure any of this stuff. It's just, it's what you like, despite, and believe me, I've done enough of this over the years, you know, reviewers attempts to try and make it objective. It's not objective, it's purely subjective. And I'll say it again, the best guitar sound to you is the best guitar sound. Part of the motivation for making this video, inspired by Keith, I think is to make the same plea that Keith is making, which is quit worrying about what everyone else is playing. Play what inspires you and absolutely nothing else. I wish you very happy tones, people. And uh, seeing as we are talking about, well, in the loosest term, music, let's see if I can make some with this collection of stuff here. See you next time.